As fans mourn the death of comedy icon Robin Williams, nowhere is the loss more keenly felt than at home by his beloved family. But why would online bullies target one of his children? All three bravely stepping forward today, sharing their pain. And the way Zelda Williams responded to the cyber bullies will make you smile. It's the life and death of Robin Williams. They were often in the background, in the shadows of a man whose humor and presence were larger than life itself. There they are, playing at their father's side. For Robin Williams, his three children, Zelda, Zach, and Cody, were the greatest gifts he'd ever received. If you could go back and relive any day in your life? Yeah, just the birth of my children. Each one. Those, those are all great days. And they've all turned out amazing. That's the ultimate production deal. That's the, the gift that keeps on giving, and that's the thing that makes life worth living. Today, Zelda, now 25, offered a rare and emotional glimpse in a blog post, grieving her father. My family has always been private about our time spent together. It was our way of keeping one thing that was ours with a man we shared with an entire world. But now that's gone, and I feel stripped bare. Hi, I'm Robin Williams. This is my daughter, Zelda Ray Williams. Though they were private, it was clear the Williams shared a loving bond, overflowing. In this interview for Game News, Robin Williams tells the story of how he named his little girl. A lot of people come up and say she named after F. Scott Fitzgerald's wife. No, <laughs> it's Zelda for the Legend of Zelda. They even starred in a commercial for her namesake. I became a hero. Dad. I saved your kingdom. Dad. Yes, Zelda? Are you mixing me up with the princess again? Hard to say, you're both pretty magical. And while indeed the whole world seems to be grieving, for Zelda, the question of why is harder to bear. While I'll never ever understand how he could be loved so deeply and not find it in his heart to stay, there's minor comfort in knowing our grief and loss in some small way is shared with millions. What does suicide leave in its wake? There's a lot of anger, shame, blame. If I had been a better friend, wife, mother, sister, would this still have happened? And today, Zelda had even more to deal with, taking herself off Twitter after online bullies baited her with disturbing doctored images of her father. But she responded with her father's good humor. As for those who are sending negativity, you know that some small giggling part of my dad is sending a flock of pigeons to your house to poop on your car right after you've had it washed. After all, he loved to laugh. She was the victim of some really nasty social media commentary, and, you know, that's out of line. Her brothers, Zach, who's now 31, and 22-year-old Cody, shared their grief publicly as well. The world got a little grayer. I will carry his heart with me every day. I will miss him and take him with me everywhere I go for the rest of my life and will look forward forever to the moment when I get to see him again. His struggles were theirs too, living with a genius father who was battling addiction. In 2006, he spoke to Diane Sawyer about going home to his family, finally sober. What have they said to you through this? That they love me, which is great. That's the simplest and most wonderful thing. That's the bottom line. That helps the most. And then the rest is up to me and God. And then, then you got to keep working it every day. That's the drill. Humiliations give you humility, <laughs> literally. Is there a sadness about these past two years then? Um, yeah, there's a sadness. And then you have to go, then there's also, um, there's also hope. I mean, a sadness, it's always like, yeah, you wish they hadn't happened, but they did. And the purpose is to make you different. It's what they call a Buddhist gift. I would call it the ultimate Christian gift. It's that idea of you're back and you realize the thing that matters are others. Way beyond yourself. But today we learned that just days before William's death, his biking partner was scared for his friend. Our last ride 10 days ago was very different. He barely spoke on the ride. He was very distracted and stressed. We didn't play around much before and we didn't play around much after and we didn't play around on the ride. He went so far as to alert William's manager. And they, of course, were aware of it and doing everything they possibly could. But, yeah, that was, that was the Robin Williams I had never seen before in all the years I'd known him and that probably not too many people had seen. Skinny, lost a lot of weight, just very distracted, and I was very concerned. 
After his CBS show, The Crazy Ones, was canceled back in May. We want you to choose your agency based on merit. You're joking. Of course I am. Choose us because we're pretty. Just two months later, Robin Williams was back in rehab. The sadness and depression that plagued Robin Williams is all too common in Hollywood. There's a pressure that's put on stars 24 hours a day that people who were famous in previous generations just didn't have to deal with. And I went to rehab in wine country just to keep my options open. <laughs> Stand-up comics in particular have a lot of problems with fame because they're out there. It's them. They're not playing a performance. They're not playing a character. And that comes with a lot of pressure. When you're a celebrity, everybody wants a piece of you, sir. Unless you in a chilling scene in his breakout role on Mork and Mindy, he seems to foreshadow the pitfalls of his future fame. Some are victims of their own fame. Very special and talented people. People like Elvis Presley, Marilyn Monroe, Janis Joplin, Jimi Hendrix, Lenny Bruce, Freddie Prince, and John Lennon. In all his roles, from the manic alien nanu, nanu. to the cross-dressing nanny, ah! Ah! there was also pain behind the laughter. He spoke openly about sadness to NPR in 2006. In the process of looking for comedy, you look, you have to be deeply honest, and then doing that, you'll find out, here's the other side, you know, uh, you know you'll be looking under the rock occasionally for the laughter. So, you yeah, know, they have a depressed side, but is it always the sad clown thing? No. The radio host asks if Williams is depressed. No clinical depression. No, I'm, uh, you, I get bummed, like I think a lot of us do at certain times. You look at the world and go, whoa. And then other moments you look and go, oh. The sadness is a burden many comedians seem to share. John Belushi, Chris Farley, and Richard Pryor also hid troubled lives battling substance abuse behind their jokes. A lot of comedy comes from human experience, and a lot of human experience can be very painful. And um, laughing about it, joking about it, is a coping mechanism. It's just not a very good one because it can mask it, but it doesn't really heal it. Two days after William's death, the outpouring of love and grief continues. Tonight, Broadway dimmed its lights in tribute to remember the man who made it his life's mission to bring us laughter and tears. A fitting memorial.